Recall that when I created this new object called the body, I actually added some parameters to it. Uh, it had a height of 1.5, it had a length as well as a width, and I actually want my model to use those parameters. So let me show you how you can actually do that. That plays a role when we actually get to the conveyor of the bodies. At this point in time, we have assigned the speed of the um, of the conveyor as one meter per second and if we go down we have actually changed the entity length to be 0 0.5 variable meters but that 0 0.5 has now been hard coded rather what we would like is that that is being taken uh, not by hard coding it but taking it from the entity that arrives on the conveyor when we go to AnyLogic's help, to the library reference guide, and we actually go to Conveyor. If you scroll down to Functions, remember that I said Functions gives you an idea of how can you address programmatically the conveyor and the entities on the conveyor. You can address the entity when you have a look at the actions and the functions any time that you want to address the particular entity that came into that block you will refer to it as T simply means whatever the type is you will refer to it as entity. So let's see if that is actually available to us. Go back to our model. In the conveyor bodies, instead of 0 0.5, we're going to select that and start typing enter. Let's see what happens when we press control space. Indeed, it picks up that entity is actually of type body. That is what we're after. If we press dot, control space you actually see that it immediately picks up that a body has a number of parameters height length and width and let's say we want to pick up that entity's width it was coded in the body itself at 0 0.5 so we multiply that 0 0.5 with variable meters and it will convert it to the number of pixels for us it may happen that you have an application where you have a shape uh, or some object for which you actually want the color to change. So let me demonstrate how one can actually do that. For that I'm going to zoom into my assembly area. I just want to switch off the visibility so that that is not seen during the simulation. Let me just move it left a little bit. And I'm going to just add, in terms of the assembly machine, I want to add my machine over there. Initially, it has color white. I'm going to call that block of mine shape assembly machine. And I want the color of this rectangle to actually be changed dynamically somewhere in my model. Again, this is just for illustrative purposes, if you have such an application. To achieve that, I'm going to create a function called update. color. I don't mind if it is visible, it will just be around. If I have a look at the block uh, uh, properties, I can set whether it will just perform some action or whether I want the function to actually give a result such as a value or a list or a, um, some calculation result back to me. In this case I'm going to leave that empty. I just want this function to actually update the color of that machine. Do I pass it any arguments? In my case, I'm not going to pass it any arguments. 
and is just the function body. For this you probably need to know a little bit more Java. Again, for those of you that are interested, that's what this demonstration is for. Um, I highly recommend that you just type Java Video Tutorials Eclipse into Google and have a look at the nice video tutorials that are available. So what should this function actually do? It should calculate the utilization and let's say if none of the resources are busy delaying or assembling a body and a door, then the color of the machine should be white. If the utilization is less than or equal to 33%, we want the unit to turn green in color. If it is between 33 and let's say two thirds or 67%, it should turn yellow and it should be red if the utilization actually exceeds 67%. So I can calculate, I can have a, an entire little program that I can write in that function body. So firstly, I'm just going to calculate a local variable, um, which I will call utilization. How do I intend to calculate the utilization? I'm interested to know how many units are being assembled, meaning are currently busy in the process of, of delayed because they are, they are um, in the assembly machine. And I want to express that as a percentage of how many resources are actually available to work on them. And that should give me an idea of what the utilization is. The resource pool does have its own utilization calculation, um, but for demonstration purposes, let me kind of calculate it locally here. All right, so I know that in my logical block for the assembler is where the delay actually occurs. If I go to the library reference guide to the assembler and I scroll down, I can actually see programmatically how I can use this block. And there you actually see that there is an integer and there's a method called delay size, which returns the number of entities in the embedded delay object. And that's exactly what I'm interested in. How many units are being delayed because they are being assembled? And it gives back to me a primitive variable of type integer. And that is the logic that I want to piggyback on. So I, I've called my assembling block assembler. So I'm just going to start typing, assemb control space. And there it actually picks up my assembler. That's the one that I'm looking for. What methods do I have available? Dot control space. And is it delay? Start typing D, delay get, delay size. That's the one that I'm interested in. And the number of units being delayed, I want to express as a fraction of how many resources do I actually have available? And the number of resources I will get from the assembly machine. It also picks up my assembly machine dot control space. And there you actually see the first parameter that it provides is the capacity. Now recall that both the assembler dot delay size um, gives back an integer and the assembly machine capacity is also expressed in an integer. But because I divide the two, I actually rather want to work with double values. In Java, what I do is I cast each one of those integer variables by simply putting double in brackets at its start. And just to make sure that the operations are done in the correct sequence. I cast both of these each of those values, cast them to double, otherwise Java will come up with some funny rounding um, calculations in terms of how it deals 
with, with dividing uh, integers with one another.